that's already shown us huge benefit disrupting some industries. So when we first started Warner Brothers, um, things like uh, digital transformation and, and uh, the, the, these terms like this didn't exist. I'm going to send this to all owners in the country. To 200 model um, in the end. Uh, Prakash, you're an industry veteran. You've witnessed and contributed to its evolution. What are some of the most significant changes you've seen in the past 10 years? Um, uh, if we were to take one uh, technology in particular, I would say BIM is probably the one that's had the biggest impact. Uh, when I first started uh, in, the, in the industry, it was, it was something that was very niche and, and almost like a, sci a science project or, or, yes. or a, something that's done in a university, you know. And now, especially in this region, it's become almost ubiquitous, right? People, uh, people don't do um, certain scales of projects without, without BIM and, uh, and without a, a BIM philosophy. So to me, one of the signs of the change is people having job titles such as yours. Um, what's the job description for a digital project delivery lead? What do you do every day? In terms of what I do now, um, I get to have a lot of fun. Uh, I, get, I get to uh, um, experiment and, and look at uh, new technologies. Um, I get to speak to practitioners and, and people uh, understand some of the pain points that they're having. Um, I, I, I get to try and put those two things together to, to utilize technology to, uh, to solve some of the problems that, they, that these, they, these guys are having. Um, uh, or, and but no two days are the same. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure you know you're, you're not going to be bored anytime soon. <laughs> no, I, I you know I, I really agree that we're seeing um, an acceleration of digitization of construction. In AECOM's perspective, what does a fully digitalized project look like? For me, uh, a, f a fully uh, digitized project or uh, is is one where uh, we're not using any paper. Um, the admin tasks are kept to a minimum, mm -hmm. um, approvals are all done electronically, um, there's no printing and scanning, and then the digital transformation we, which would follow on from that is actually looking at each of these processes and seeing where we can cut steps out, where we can start doing things, uh, not just doing them in a digital way. I think we're pretty close. Um, I, I, I'll give you an example um, on, on all of our supervision projects now that yes. we do. Um, we're using Autodesk BIM 360 Field uh, to uh, do things like inspections and snagging. So we're trying to remove all paper from the, from the inspection process. Um, and that's, that's already shown us huge benefits um, depending on the complexity of the project or which um, task you're trying to do. We're seeing between 30 and 60% time saving oh, across, across the whole process. You know, if you were to force me and to put me put a time scale on it, within the next uh, year to eighteen months, I think we would see, we'll start seeing projects which which we could consider it depending on the fully definition. Digitized. Yeah, yeah, fully digitized. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where do you see um, machine learning changing construction, and are there any applications that you're currently working on within AECOM? So you know, I, uh, as an industry, um, we've been capturing data on in our uh, as we as we move to electronic document management systems, as we move to digitized paper-based processes, we're all of a sudden capturing um, terabytes and terabytes of data and information. Um, but as an industry and us as a company as well, we're guilty of it. Um, we're very we're, we're very poor at doing anything with that data. Now you look at, at, at modern um, commerce and modern uh, sort of companies. The, the ones that are doing well are the ones that have managed to monetize the data, right? You look at the Googles and the Netflix and the Facebooks of the world, right? They they they're creating value from from data, and I think that there's that's a there's a huge sort of um, uh, value proposition for us as an industry um, to to start utilizing this data. Let's talk about Warner Brothers, one of your regional flagship projects. Yeah. Now, AECOM has an extensive portfolio of theme park projects worldwide, including um, the Ferrari World on Yas Island. How did you use that experience to deliver on your Warner Brothers scope? One of the advantages of working for an organization like, uh, like AECOM, which has this global diversity, means that we can import, import all of this knowledge and skills into the region. So when we first started Warner Brothers, um, things like uh, digital transformation and, and uh, the, the, these terms like this didn't exist. Um, and BIM was very nascent in, this, in the region. Um, so uh, we were, we were um, bringing the expertise and the knowledge from delivering both theme park projects and BIM projects around the world and uh, uh, utilizing that experience to um, enhance the, our services for, for Warner Brothers here. Prakash, in your opinion, what's the main difference between working on a residential and a theme park project? Um, good question. So complexity, right, is the, is a simple is the simple answer. 
um, when we're working on residential buildings or hotels, you get re repeatability on, on certain floors, you know, yes. and uh, 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 not exactly copy and paste, but um, there's a general there's a general repeatability and uh, and in terms of the use of the space and things like that. Um, but you can imagine um, uh, a theme park has different zones, and and uh, each of the zones is, has different uses. Um, so so there's the complexity in the design itself. And then in the build, right, you don't have your traditional uh, subcontractors or the traditional stakeholders. Um, here in a theme park, you have various rides which come from different vendors who have mm -hmm. different experiences. Um, and especially, uh, we found this when, because this was one of the first uh, BIM enabled uh, projects that we did in the region, um, we were on a learning curve. And at the same time, we were trying to bring uh, all of these, all of these subconsultants and subcontractors on the learning curve with us, on this journey with us. And uh, and there you get you get uh, the uh, a different set of um, complexities arising from that. For for such complexity and, and uniqueness, computational design could offer significant productivity gains. Did you consider or implement uh, computational design on Warner Brothers? Um, actually, we did. And and again, this was at a time where computational design wasn't as ubiquitous as it's becoming now, right? I think yeah. that, that we're, we're in this age now with things like Dynamo, um, where, and we're able to uh, utilize uh, computational design much more effectively. Um, so if you've ever been to Warner Brothers, you see some of the theming elements, the, the rock work and things like that. Um, those were modeled utilizing uh, parametric design uh, techniques. So you've mentioned that BIM evolved on the project. You've seen the tools, the ecosystem, and the skill set increase. What scale are we talking about here? Um, yeah, that's really interesting. So, so this was one of the first projects that we took from the design phase through construction and into operations. Okay. Um, we ended up with uh, close to 200 models um, in the end um, uh, because of the way that it was being built and the, and the way that the contractor split the models up. So you can imagine the challenge in, in uh, coordinating and, and managing uh, that, that volume of models. Um, for me, the ex most exciting part of it was the fact that we took it through the whole um, life cycle, yes. or through the process, right? Um, and as we were discussing earlier, the, the biggest value, I think, from, from BIM actually comes in utilizing the information that you've picked up from the design stage phase into the construction phase and using it for your operations. You know, um, the, the biggest cost of an asset is in its operational phase. So making small changes or what might seem like small changes during the design and the construction phase will have huge implications and impacts in the, in the operational stage. Prakash, thank you so much for your insight and your, for your time. My pleasure. And thank you from Industry Spectrum, where we discuss with industry innovators projects that are shaping the skyline of the region.